So this is my attempt at an unbiased review of the new Hat Tricks plugin by DigiNoise. As you can read in the title, I'm not going to recommend you buy this plugin. In my honest opinion, I don't think it's worth the 70 US dollars. I got it on sale for 35 US dollars, and even for that price, I don't think it's worth it. My hopes and expectations with this plugin are that it would be something that would speed up my hi-hat programming workflow. Even though it can do that in some ways, you're unfortunately sacrificing functionality and flexibility for speed and ease of use. So if you're not interested in watching the whole video, I'll get it right out of the way as to why I don't think this plugin's worth it. With an update from DigiNoise, it could actually be a great plugin. I'll get into that. My main issue with the Hattricks plugin is that it doesn't have a MIDI export feature where you'd be able to record the MIDI data for the individual notes that the plugin is creating and playing back when you play a note on your keyboard to trigger a rhythmic hi-hat sequence. Here's the MIDI data that Hattricks created when I held down notes on my keyboard to trigger different hi-hat patterns. It just says individual blocks representing the pattern that you decided to use. You don't have independent control over the notes in the pattern that it created. And I think this is a pretty big limitation. This MIDI feature alone is the one thing separating this plugin from being something that I would absolutely recommend, and because it lacks this function, it's something that I ended up not recommending. I care a lot about having flexibility as a producer, and I feel like if I created a hi-hat sequence I liked with hat tricks, I would eventually have to recreate that pattern as MIDI or in Logic Step Sequencer to do any further alterations to the notes or programming. It would end up taking more time to do those edits within the Hattrix plugin, and overall I think the plugin is a little bit clunky to use. My main other issue with this plugin is that there's a pattern triggering issue where if you press your key on your keyboard, even a fraction of a second off beat, the pattern will be completely off. Basically the plugin doesn't intelligently lock the pattern to your DAW's clock. Now let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Hattrix plugin by DigiNoise. There's definitely some advantages to using a plugin like this, especially if you're a beginner. First off is ease of use. Everything's laid out very cleanly on the GUI. It's not hard to navigate. There's no extremely difficult functions. Another advantage of the plugin is that it has a ton of built-in samples. It has hi-hats, kicks, and snares. I found it kind of strange that in the advertising for the plugin, they mentioned that you could use this for programming kick drums for something like metal. Seems like a very convoluted way to program metal kick drums. And as I mentioned before, you lack a lot of flexibility that you'd have with writing those as MIDI notes and then being able to change them later. Another advantage of the plugin is that you can create your pattern and then on live playback of the pattern, add in your pitch changes on the lower keys, as well as different articulations and rolls with the hi-hat patterns. Another advantage is that it could be a lot quicker than drawing in MIDI notes for hi-hat patterns. It can also inspire you to create patterns that you may be unfamiliar with, and you can accomplish this very quickly. This is the main appeal of the plugin in my opinion, but definitely doesn't warrant the price tag of 70 US dollars. All right, moving on to the bad. The mono and poly mode doesn't seem to function that well. It seems to allow triggering of multiple patterns at once, even when set to mono mode. And the plugin is designed to have multiple keys on your keyboard pressed at once, so I don't see how mono mode would work perfectly to begin with. Another downside to the plugin is that because there's no MIDI data being created for each individual hi-hat hit, there's no way to add swing or humanization to the MIDI patterns. And ultimately, another bad thing is the price. Even though I got this on sale for 35 US dollars, I still think that's too much. Maybe for $20 I could recommend this plugin, but definitely not for 70 Moving on to the ugly. I've noticed a recurring issue where if I load up a logic session with hat tricks and programming, and I play back the track, and then click on the plugin in my channel strip, it will immediately crash Logic, as you're seeing here. I can recreate this every single time I reopen Logic. Another ugly thing is the re-triggering sequence issue, where if you press your key a fraction of a second off of the beat of your song, your pattern ends up being completely offbeat. This could definitely be fixed through an update. And the main issue I have with the plugin is the lack of the MIDI export function. A plugin like XLN Audio XO has a sequencer built into it, and when you create your pattern on the sequencer, you can drag that MIDI information into your DAW to use with a different drum machine, and overall you just have so much more flexibility. You can humanize that MIDI, you can easily change velocities, you can do so much more. With hat tricks, you have absolutely no ability to do that, and I would really hope that down the line they add some sort of sequencer or MIDI export function to the plugin. In that case, I would end up probably recommending this plugin, especially to beginners. 
I tried to find a workaround for Hattrick's lack of a MIDI export function by routing the Hattrick's MIDI to an audio channel, recording it as an audio clip, and then using Logic's Replace Drum Track feature, which analyzes the audio clip and all of the transients, and then tries to convert each individual transient into a MIDI note. It worked somewhat well, but it wasn't able to grab some of the faster hi-hat rolls, so I can't say that this is a perfect solution. Now I'm going to go over some examples of how you can accomplish exactly what Hattrix does with other third-party plugins and with stock built-in Logic plugins. Sometimes using the stock built-in Logic plugins can actually yield a better result faster than using Hattrix. Now I'm going to play back the pattern that I created using Hattrix with this short trap demo I made in a couple of minutes. I saw some other YouTubers who use Logic reviewing DigiNoise hat tricks, talking about how impressive it was, and that was really surprising to me because as of the 10.5 update for Logic Pro, they added a step sequencer that allows you to accomplish exactly what hat tricks does, basically just as fast, with much more control over the notes. From what I can tell, it doesn't allow exporting MIDI either, but you have the ability to drag in your own samples, so you're not limited to the stock Logic drum sounds and you can create very intricate patterns very quickly with the step sequencer. Here's an example of one I made. Now I'll use Logic's built-in drum machine designer with step sequencer to show you how you can very quickly and easily create interesting hi-hat patterns. I'll start by creating a new software instrument. Then you can use this drop down menu to go to Drum Machine Designer. Click on Empty Kit right here. It'll bring you to the view where you can see all of the drum kits. I'll use the 808 Flex Kit again for this example. Now I have that kit loaded up. You can close out of that window and close Library View with Y. Now you have this drop down menu for 808 Flex Kit, which is currently hiding all components. You're going to show all the components of the kit and go to Hi Hat Closed. Click P to open up MIDI Roll. And you can go up here on this top bar to Step Sequencer. Change 16 steps to 32 steps just so you have more flexibility and you have more notes that you can see right off the bat. Now we'll draw on a super simple pattern to start. Here's where things get fun. So that's a pretty lame pattern, but you can make it very quickly. There's no pitched notes, there's no rolls, not much interesting stuff going on. Right here you have this arrow. You can open up the drop down menu to show velocity and note repeat. You can also add different things here that you can alter with the plus, so it's on gate. Use this menu to change note octave, loop and start, and select note. This note area right here is what you're going to use to pitch the different hi-hat parts. For this example, you're only going to need to use note repeat and note. Note is going to control the pitch, and note repeat is going to control how many times the hi-hat is getting played for that particular beat. So let's make the pattern interesting. These are all currently set to 1. You can click and drag up to add more steps or drag down to create fewer. Let's divide that into 4 notes. Let's move on here and create two, two. Once you get it past eight, things get pretty machine gunny and clicky. Move this to four. Let's hear how this sounds.
Maybe I'll add another note here. Okay, for this purpose, that's a good enough pattern. Now I'm going to use this note function right here to change the pitch of certain areas. Let's take this first one and pitch it down. And for these two subdivisions here, let's pitch it up. Maybe for this section of three notes here, I can have it pitched down chromatically. Now, if you want to extend that pattern past the 32 steps, just move it up to 64. And now you have double the length for a pattern and you can independently control the first 32 steps and the last 32 steps. If you're a Logic user, you can save yourself a lot of money just by using that step sequencer feature. Here's an example of using XL on Audio XO to do exactly what Hattrix does with a lot more control and a lot more intricacy. I created a MIDI hi-hat pattern here, as you can see, and I'll play it back for you so you can hear it. To accomplish pitching of the hi-hat, I took the exact same closed hi-hat sample and dragged it onto two different lanes, and then used the pitch function here to move it up and down a couple semitones for some variety in the pitch of the hi-hats. You can use this little area below the note on the sequencer to change the amount of notes per individual segment on your sequencer. And here's the huge advantage of using something like XO to create hi-hat rolls. I can grab the MIDI right here, beat as MIDI and drag it onto my project. This is going to give me much more control than using hat tricks. For example, if I wanted to grab all my MIDI and do something like add swing, I can easily accomplish that. Even Logic's Ultra Beat creates actual MIDI data with its export function. Overall, I don't think hat tricks is a terrible plugin, but I don't think its functionality and usability warrants the price tag of 70 US dollars, or even the sale price of 35 US dollars. Maybe for an absolute beginner producer, it could be beneficial to lay down hi-hat patterns when you're extremely short on time, but for my own productions, I'm not willing to sacrifice the flexibility and control over MIDI for something that's just a bit quicker. And as I demonstrated, you can use Logic Step Sequencer with the built-in drum machines or your own samples to create patterns that are just as interesting and intricate as the patterns that hat tricks can create. In my own opinion, I don't think the benefit of using hat tricks outweighs the cost, and for that reason, I wouldn't recommend you buy this plugin. If you have a differing opinion, feel free and let me know. If you found that this plugin is extremely useful, or if you have any use cases where you think that I'm incorrect, or if there's something I don't know about the plugin, feel free and let me know. I'd love to know what you think of it, but otherwise, I would say don't buy this. I may end up even reaching out to the company to ask if they can integrate something like a step sequencer or a MIDI export function into the plugin, because in that case, I would absolutely recommend this plugin, but in its current state, I'm not willing to recommend it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, I hope you got something out of it. If you liked it or if you learned something, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.